please like and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment. I read all of the comments. And now, let's get on with the show. When last we left our intrepid adventurers, Scala wakes up and finds Sania still in bed with her. There's a knock at the door, and Australia pokes her head in. She informs them that breakfast will be ready in a few moments, and they need to get up. After breakfast, the three of them talk about what is written in the book that Madrigar left them, and if it's important. Sania says that the book is basically observations that Madrigar made. She mentions that according to Madrigar, the triumvirate that rules the Manthuthian Combine is well into the side of Distaria. There are notes also that Anton Medoras, the Vampire Lord, is leading the triumvirate now. Now that Rhiannon Ravenwood is in jail and Oblio Ravenspear is missing, Medoras is leading the Manthuthian Combine by himself. Also, there's a mention that Distaria has absorbed the powers of the Death Master Absalom as well as taken control of his minions tied to the ring Tara Rael. Scala says that that makes sense based on what the creature in her room was saying. She says that before she was worried that she would end up serving Absalom, the Death Master, but now it means she'll be serving Distaria. The room is quiet at that revelation. Australia breaks the silence and says that Sania needs to finish the translation. Then it needs to be taken to her father, the Peace Lord, also known as the Red. He is the counselor to Jakena Junico, of Southern Deserata. Scala agrees, but doesn't see how it's going to help. When Australia is called away, Sania leans in close and whispers, You were also mentioned in the book, by name. Meanwhile, in Mountain Vale, the party is meeting the recently revived son of the local Kenna, Klep. The young man seems to be no worse for the experience of being dead, and soon Kenna Alexander and Klep leave. After they're gone, Garu mentions that he detected a glamour about the boy, and the priest Mercy says that he felt a presence about him as well, the same kind of presence he felt around Ursaea. Kevin says that he's not afraid of demons and maybe they should fight it and destroy it. Garu and Brock ask the others to wait. They feel that Ursaea doesn't seem to be here to harm anybody and that maybe Mercy and he can talk to the creature. Brock says that it was Distaria's people who locked her up after all. The party breaks up and they go their separate ways to think about this. Finn goes up into the mountains to learn the song of the town, something that he says all towns have in them. He says it's a guide to the alignment of the people, whether good or evil. Mercy tends the sick and reads from the book of Chaldasea that Akai gave him. He closes his eyes for a moment and says a prayer for her soul, wherever she is. Kevin and Kimmy go back to the Griffin, which is the local inn they stay at. Kimmy is approached by the barkeep with an offer. No, not that kind of offer. 
He's noticed that Kimmy seems to have quite a bit of money. He asks her to invest in the inn since he feels that the village is going to start growing soon. He wants to borrow some money to cover an addition to the inn, maybe more rooms, maybe a bigger drinking room. Kimmy agrees and says they'll have the paper witnessed by the Vok at a later date. Garu tries to get the smell of Dursea off himself. He feels vaguely unclean since dealing with her. He heads up into the mountains and comes across a small lake on the outskirts of the town. He removes his clothing and goes for a swim. When he's done, he comes back and finds Brock next to his clothes. The monk is asleep and having vivid dreams. Oscar comes into the house of healing and says hello to Mercy. He says that there is a letter from Jakena Junico in Sylvia's rest, and Maug can't read it. He'd like Mercy to come and translate it. When they arrive, Maug is besides herself. She tells Mercy that she may have to leave Mountain Vale, depending on what the letter says. Mercy takes the official-looking document and has some trouble since it's a different kind of common that he's used to. He finishes his third reading of the note, but his understanding of the language is just too weak. Giving up, he sends someone to go find Paladin Marcus.